What's up? In this video, I'm playing the Steel Beast Scenario Combat Team Flank Attack at Hamelin, made by Panzer Leader. You can pause the video if you want to read the briefing in its entirety. Essentially, my company has been tasked with seizing Objective Eddington in 90 minutes or less from the start of the mission. For the enemy, I'll be facing a mix of tanks, Burdum 2s equipped with missiles, and a mix of Russian PCs. It is also possible that the enemy will have Hind Ds in reserve. The enemy is also likely to emplace minefields, as well as destroy bridges in our AO, so I've certainly got my work cut out for me. Luckily for me, my company is currently at full strength, with some attachments. I've got four scimitars from the Green Guards that I'll be employing as scouts. I want to use these guys to find the enemy, so my tanks can action on. Speaking of tanks, I've got 11 Challenger 2s at my disposal, consisting of three platoons, as well as my XO and myself. It is worth noting that for this scenario's time frame, the British Army was actually using Challenger 1s. The Challenger 1 isn't currently modeled in Steel Beast, but their capabilities have been approximated by outfitting them with older ammunition. Also, I would like to point out that I have modified the Challenger 2's standard appearance by using Wardog's excellent Challenger 2 pack. I've put a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Last, but not least, I have a platoon of four warriors. I expect to get the most use out of these vehicles within the urban terrain surrounding Objective Eddington. I've also got some logistics vehicles with me and my company, but for this mission I don't anticipate that I'll be using them a lot. My plan is relatively simple. I'm going to maneuver along Avenue of Attack Sword, bypass the enemy's main defensive positions that I have templated to be south of Objective Eddington, and attack him from the north, to his rear. Since the enemy is likely to destroy bridges, I have identified three crossing sites, and will be using them to conduct a company march through the woods to the north, reconsolidate and resupply at Assault Position Colt, before launching our assault through the urban terrain and seizing Objective Eddington. It's a good plan, but the question is, Will it survive contact with the enemy? Let's find out. I started the mission by immediately dividing one of my scout teams and sending them east to identify the enemy's positions. I sent the second team to the north to gain observation on two of the crossing points located in the river to the north, as well as to identify any enemy forces in their proximity. I also began moving my tanks through the woods to the north. In addition, I began calling in artillery strikes on some templated enemy positions to prep the battlefield before my arrival. One of my scimitars made contact with the enemy quickly by observing one of their ATGM striking an allied vehicle. I continued to send units from my company through the woods, setting the conditions for crossing the river. As my southernmost scimitar began cresting a hill, I could observe fighting positions, but they were eerily empty. The mood quickly changed, however, when elements from the battalion spotted enemy tanks. Despite a lack of visual observation, I continued to pull my scimitar forward, hoping to observe the enemy.
with the enemy being spotted by adjacent units, I began using artillery to interdict them. As my gunner called out that he had identified a PC, I moved to establish observation of their positions with the hope of calling artillery on them to destroy the enemy. As I began preparing a fire mission, I had a feeling that I should really back up the scimitar. But I decided that I could call in this fire mission pretty quick. I figured that I could have it called in and pull back before the enemy even noticed I was there. Unfortunately, I was going to discover rather quickly that I was wrong. While the enemy's ATGM had struck the vehicle, I was fortunate enough that it hit the side ammo box, causing no damage. As I withdrew my scout from direct fire contact, I continued to employ artillery to disrupt and destroy the enemy. My scout team in the north spotted enemy armor. Learning from my earlier encounter, I decided to immediately withdraw them and send my tanks forward to engage the enemy's armor. One of my scouts finally arrived at the wood line to the northeast. I observed the area quickly before withdrawing the scout, making sure that I identified enemy positions for the incoming tanks to destroy. I also continued the not so glamorous task of continuing to march my company forward. One of my challengers moved forward to destroy the identified enemy armor. While we did achieve the element of surprise, the enemy was relatively quick to react, managing to hit my tank with one of their rounds before I withdrew it. Fortunately, it bounced harmlessly off the armor, causing no real damage. On the way! With one tank withdrawing, I sent my XO forward to continue the engagement. My XO moved forward and began engaging the enemy's armor. Unfortunately, a well-placed shot from an enemy shell struck between the turret and the hull, permanently disabling the tank for the remainder of the game. Completely helpless without its engine, my Exo's tank remained in position, receiving round after round from the enemy. My EXO's wingman surged forward, preparing to destroy the enemy armor. My EXO's tank, amazingly, survived yet another hit from a Sabo round. The enemy would fire off one more round before finally being destroyed. Miraculously, the shell bounced. My EXO's tank had survived four hits. Target. With the tank threat eliminated, we began to engage the enemy's fire, ATGMs. Fire. Fire. On the way. 
way. I ordered one of my platoons to move forward and begin crossing the river. While the platoon rushed forward, I continued to engage the enemy's ATGMs with both direct fire weapon systems as well as indirect from artillery. On the way! Last heat! On the way! Target! PC! Fire! PC! Target! As I moved towards crossing site 1, I looked for foliage sticking up from the water, indicating a shallow point of the river. I also looked for gently sloping riverbanks to ensure that my tanks would be able to climb out onto the other side. With a suitable point identified, I ordered my platoon into a close column formation and moved at top speed across the river. With my first tank successfully across, I began the process of moving each tank across the river manually and reconsolidating them on the other side. I ordered the second Ring tank platoon to a crossing site. The action in the east had not ceased, and my tank continued to engage and destroy the enemy's ET chains. Target! Ceasefire! With the general crossing area largely secure, I ordered all of my vehicles to begin crossing the river. The second crossing point was much easier to identify. It was extremely narrow and directly next to the destroyed bridge. This point would be ideal for ensuring that my scimitars, logistics vehicles, and warriors were able to cross without becoming bogged down. While the enemy began attempting to destroy our forces with artillery, at this point there was nothing they could do to stop my entire company from safely crossing the river. While my company moved to assault position Colt, I took the time to have artillery prep the objective for our upcoming assault. As my company began rearming at the assault position, I moved a section of scouts forward to gain observation of the urban terrain surrounding the objective. With the first tank platoon reloaded, I ordered them to establish at battle position 3 Alpha, facing north, to begin our isolation of the objective. I sent the next platoon to battle position 3 Bravo to establish a support by fire. I decided to move my tank to the support by fire position so that I would be able to best command and control the action on the objective. As these movements were occurring, I continued to attack the objective with artillery to both destroy the enemy as well as to force them to displace out of any prepared defenses they had. With my last tank platoon finally reloaded, I ordered them forward into the urban terrain. I would use them to assist the warriors in their advance. Our friendly tank spotted an enemy PC. I called for indirect. Since we were behind the objective, 
the general area seemed relatively clear of the enemy. This was a good thing. If this worked out properly, we would hit the enemy in the rear and they would be unable to resist our attack. I ordered my second scout section to proceed to the south of the objective and establish an observation post. I wanted to make sure the enemy was not able to flank my force. As my platoons neared the objective, I ordered them to continue forward. Our artillery continued to fall, inflicting casualties on the enemy. As our support by fire position began to get prepared, I ordered our warriors to begin a slow advance into the city. The view from the support by fire position appeared relatively clear, but friendly forces spotted the enemy within the city. As before, I called for more artillery. One of our platoons were able to identify the enemy before the artillery rounds impacted. I stopped the mission and engaged with direct fire. With all known contacts cleared, we continued to advance through the urban terrain. The area appeared relatively peaceful until one of my warriors made visual contact with some enemy dismounts. This variant of the warrior has a semi-powered turret and requires the use of hand cranks for precise aiming. This makes engagements painfully slow. My tanks also encountered enemy infantry. We made short work of them with the coax. With the infantry destroyed, we continued our advance. Gunner Sabo, PC. ZSU-23-4 was on the other side of the river. I should have switched to thermals in this situation, since I was having difficulty identifying it until it shot at me. Fortunately, it did no damage, and I was able to make quick work of it. My units continued to move south, clearing the objective. We found very few remaining enemy forces. Resistance was light. In the end, we were able to seize the objective within 90 minutes. This gave us a major victory. The end of the mission saw my company concentrated on the objective. None of my vehicles had been destroyed, and I had 0% casualties among the infantry. I was certainly lucky during this battle. The enemy was destroyed on the objective, and we had managed to completely bypass the enemy's main kill zone. His defensive plan suggested that he was expecting us to go straight down the middle. If we had, he would have been able to attack us from the front and the left flank. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all my latest content. What would you like to see me do next in Steel Beast? Leave a comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.